to the Buy Box Bandits podcast. Welcome back to the Buy Box Bandits podcast. Today we have another wholesale guest, which has been a common theme lately because a lot of people are interested in getting into that stuff. So we'll give the people what they want. So we have Curtis here, who is a fellow Pennsylvania native like all of us. Um, on here is around our age and is killing the game with wholesale so Curtis thanks for being here with us man thanks for having me absolutely so take us back to the beginning uh how'd you find Amazon were you an entrepreneurial <sighs> kid were you always selling stuff the opposite let's hear how you got into all this crazy stuff yeah uh entrepreneur for life uh really found Amazon in college uh, I used to do eBay drop shipping so I used to drop ship from Amazon to eBay Nice. Back, in the, back in the good old days when you were allowed to do that and they didn't care. <laughs> um, and then as time went on, like, you know, back then we're making like, like 30, 40 cents on an item from dropshipping, but we're selling hundreds and hundreds a day, you know, That's so, fun. you know, automating it, getting VAs that do <laughs> orders and stuff and, you know, making good money when it comes to, you know, after all like the cash back and stuff. Um, Cause from Walmart and stuff, there was good cash back, but then fast forward a little bit. Um, that was like a lot of work for like, not a lot of money. So yeah. I had a buddy who was in Ohio who did Amazon and I'm like, like teach me this. So he got me the basics, you know, got me ungated in grocery. And uh, that's where I started. Basically, I would go around to grocery stores on Thursdays around the area. I knew that, that I knew that, that that's when they would start their weekly sales. So I'd be like, all right, so Thursday I'm hitting these grocery stores up and scanning everything that's on special for the week and if I and if there's like a solid product I'm going to the manager and say hey I need to order like 10 15 20 cases of this stuff you know so I just go to like the service desk and put like a rain check order in so you lock that price in it might not come for like two weeks but you, but you get that price at what it is now so I started doing that from my house and then from my college dorm room I'd fill my dorm room up with groceries and stuff and just pack it up awesome. in my dorm room right and then uh Fast forward a little bit later, um, we started doing some wholesale and actually left the grocery game for a little bit and started doing, uh, you know, these liquidated, you know, buyout supplier email guys. You know what I'm talking about? Like, well, these guys will yeah. Send e- yeah, they'll send you emails. You know, I got a thousand of these or a thousand of these, you know. Maybe yeah, like, you had a, a list with 20 other sellers and it's first come, first serve. Whoever yeah, gets yeah. To them first. Yep. And then it's like, you know, this guy sold to this guy sold to this guy. So they're all making money. So, unless you took everything, you'd be like, it'd be a price war. So yeah. at some point I started buying like everything. I um, did a lot of actually cosmetics after grocery and found like the source guy who was distributing all these deals. And I visited him, visited his warehouse in New Jersey. Um, had a really connection with him, bought a ton of stuff from him, Bought I did all take all. So we were kind of like, taking over the market in that sense for there was no competition because we were taking all like the product that he had available. And then graduated college, um, started doing, I kept doing the email list thing, but then I started trying to do product label and I failed epically, lost like Epic. $15,000. <laughs> like $15, like it was bad. Um, so then went back to wholesale. And at that point, it was grocery again and retail arbitrage and a little bit of wholesale. But then I moved away for a year. And then when I came back, was when we got the warehouse and that's when I just like went all in like time to fill this place up. You know, I worked with the largest grocery distributor in the country or one of them, I should say. Um, I know that serves Walmart, Target, all the local stores around, you know, the nation. So like, um, so we started hitting them hard. Um, minimum order was like, fi- it was a uh, minimum order was 5,000 pounds of stuff. So we started working with them a ton, got in, you know, 15, 20 pounds a week and just got them right back out, um, had employees and everything. And that went well for like a year. Like, and let me tell yeah, you. Yeah, I noticed you're using past tense, not present tense. Yeah, yeah. And his yeah. face is like, <laughs> I, I like the energy, but yeah, I'm, I'm <laughs> where this is going. Yeah, like that went well for like a year. And so I don't know if you guys have any employees or have had any employees, but, yeah. you know, it's really hard to find good people, you know? Oh, so yeah. So the first, you know, I was going to employees because like the first few months, like, or the first month, they'd be selling enthusiastic. 
And then they're like, all right, well, what can I get away with? What can I get away with? What can I get away with? And, you know, the phones, they get lazy, production's kind of down. And at some point, you know, like during COVID, like prices, you guys know for grocery stuff and personal care was like through the roof, like you could turn a penny into a dollar, like easy. And it was, you know, we were just killing the game. We were selling everything, everything that like from my distributors was like profitable. It was insane. If you could get it right. A lot of times things are back ordered. So we hustled that for about a year, year and a half. And in the last like seven months, um, in August, we got an email from the distributor that we were using. We were doing the most volume with. We spent like half a million dollars with them in 2021. And we uh, got an email saying they're cutting off all e-commerce because Gosh. the supply chain issues, they cannot even service the grocery stores. So they don't, they can't, they don't want any online guys buying from what the grocery stores need. So that was like, I was like, okay. So now we have to re, we had to like re-strategize. But at this point, I had already like let go of most of my employees. We were already like, you know, slowing down. So I just I let them all go. I'm like, I don't need I don't need any employees now. I had to have to regroup. So now I'm doing wholesale and online arbitrage both. Nice. Um, focusing more on higher ticket items and Obviously, I just announced the whole warehouse thing. We can get to that whenever you want to, but we're doing wholesale, higher ticket items, online arbitrage, and we're working with some brands that some more smaller niche brands that need sellers or that will ship directly to Amazon for us. So that's what we're kind of doing right now. Nice. Yeah. And being in Pennsylvania, we have some, in some categories, sales tax advantage over like pretty much everyone else in the country. So OA can be very advantageous. In right. some cases, um, categorically, are you still in like the personal care grocery space mainly right uh, now? Not at all. No, not at no. all. Okay. Uh, not really. It's, it's crazy, man. Like, so once like COVID kind of like slowed down, um, a lot of people, you know, kind of like, you know, we saw the keep charts were like, so I don't know, COVID started in like March or February of 2019, 2020. Yeah. And the keep yeah. drawn from like here and just went up. Like the price of everything just went up and everything was profitable. Well, you know, once things started calming down, we noticed a lot of pricing coming down back down to earth. And right. yes, items were so profitable, but you know, I don't like you had to sell a crap load of these items to really make good, good money. You know, the volume. And that point, I'm like, well, I'm already having a hard enough time with my employees. So, you know, the more headache is ordering all this product, but then it's taking forever to get out of the warehouse. So I explored a prep center, not cost effective when it comes to volume oh, wholesale, yeah. right? Yeah, oh, absolutely. Isn't Definitely. Not yeah. cost effective whatsoever. Um, even if I send them 40,000 units, it's just not cost effective. Um, sure, I don't have to do anything. So I just needed to simplify my business plan. So right now we are in um, electronics, pretty big. Nice. Yeah. Um, that's high that's ticket. Yeah. Niche. yeah. A lot of people don't um, go after that. Electronics. Um, the return rate sucks, but you may. What is it specifically? Is it over 10%? Oh yeah. Yeah. Especially like, cause I work with a brand, um, that a, a, an electronic brand that, you know, I don't sell for 200 bucks. My cost is 90 bucks, you know? So it's, there's definitely, I've seen higher ROI, I mean, not ROI, I shouldn't say that, but instead of, you know, because grocery, it wasn't that hard to find an 80 percenter, you know, it was fairly right. simple, but if I'm only selling that item for, let's say 10 bucks, I'm making what, two, three bucks in terms of ROI standpoint. So it cost me five bucks. I'm making three bucks. Yeah, that's a great ROI, but I've got to sell a hundred of them to make what I'm making on, you know, a couple items that are higher ticket, you know, and the returns suck on um, electronics, but instantly I get my returns back and I put them right on eBay or I get a warranty, you know? So it's really not bad if you just keep up with your returns, put on eBay, inspect it. I, I don't sell anything used on Amazon. I just refuse. Yeah. I think it's yeah, it's just bad practice. Weird. A lot of people don't read like the condition notes and they get yeah. upset. So I go right to eBay. 
So yeah, we're in uh, electronics, home appliances, you know, uh, you know, uh, kitchen appliances, vacuum cleaners, all that kind of stuff, you know, whatever's higher ticket. Um, a lot of it is um, some wholesale I get through distributors, um, and some of it is online arbitrage. I mean, whatever I can make a dollar on, I'm going to. But I'm actually less stressed now because I can sell 20 things a day and make an average of 25 to 50 bucks an item and make this make more of the same, if not more, as I was when I was pushing a couple hundred items a day grocery. And, and less, less, less work and infrastructure. Less work gives me time to diversify income streams and work on other projects, you know? Yeah. So, Are you so you're doing all prep by yourself now? Yeah. And actually, most of my stuff's actually a merchant fulfilling it. Nice. Oh, really? Okay, cool. Uh, yeah. When you deal with like stuff other people won't go after, you totally can because yeah. like other people just aren't. And for those watching who are curious how you figure that out, data, buy box statistics on Kiba, you can see who's actually getting sales on stuff. On a lot of items, you'd be surprised. People are, are merchant fulfilling them successfully. Yeah. Well, even when there's a ton of like prime, I'm like, you know, I just spent say $20,000 on a hundred items or 50 items. So that's like a big investment cost. So by the time I label them and send them over to work, like ADP one or wherever, wherever that's it's good. going that day, yeah. you know, um, and then they get back order for two, three weeks, right. They're being transferred all over the, all over the place. Yeah. So they're not available for, you know, sometimes three weeks and month. Well, that 20 grand is will turn into 30 grand or 35 grand. But if I can just merchant film the first week I get it, then I get that money back right away. And my Amazon account, I take daily payouts. Like I have the ability to just, just to on-demand disbursement. Right. So yeah. if I can sell that stuff like that and do it quick, I can get the money back and just keep turning it, you know? Yeah. So, Are you merchant film prime? Uh, no, uh, because I don't want to ship on Saturdays. And I, you know, That's when I did that rule, I'm like, you know what? You like, I'm like, you already sell your soul to the devil selling Amazon as it is, you know, <laughs> but you know, and I'm just like, I don't want them to have that leverage. Um, so I don't do, so I don't do uh, prime. Uh, I do same day shipping. I do everything UPS ground. I don't mess with post office. They are terrible for the most part. <laughs> I have yeah. daily pickups, come pick up my UPS. And I haven't had really any issues with UPS at all. Are you paying for pickups or are you use you getting no. free? Smart man. No, okay. I mean, a lot just, of people uh, don't know about that. I get free. Yeah. They yeah. have just yeah. It, I, you know, it's it's a little bit more work. Like, like so how I do it is just, you know, I print a label out the night before or whatever. Yeah. And you just schedule the pickup with that tracking number and they take it all. Yeah, you could have a VA do, yeah. it the, do it for the whole month, like one night. Oh, if yeah. You wanted to. yeah, that's sick. Um, but yeah, okay. A lot of people don't know how to. Don't I mean, his is that. his is easy though because he's consistently doing much of a fill, so it's not like he's yeah. like a lack of of track. Yeah, I mean, I just you know play with that like the night before, and then I just do one label quick, and just you yeah. know, just give a pick up. Yeah. So for those of you guys listening who don't know about that method, basically uh, it didn't work during Q4 for whatever reason, but yeah. Yeah. It, yeah okay. So it's for you as well. But if you guys have merchant filled UPS tracking numbers, you can get free pickups um, through that. So literally in 2020, I spent like a thousand bucks on UPS pickups for shoes and everything. And then I, I just learned randomly that you could get it for free with a UPS merchant fill label. So make sure you guys are doing that. That's a major. Did you, yeah. did you learn randomly or did someone teach you that? It's, it's uh, weird how you phrase that. Well, I, actually, I learned it from a buddy of mine who also did that. Yeah, like, man, that's how oh, yeah, my, my did too. Miles did too. Like, I learned it from Romer. Yeah. Um, and I'm like, oh, word. Like, sweet. And it didn't work during Q4, but it worked with non Q4 labels. So like labels <laughs> from September would work. It was weird, man. <laughs> I mean, it's just yeah. weird, stuff, weird stuff going on. Yeah. Are you at a similar volume, like 100K a month, what you were when you were? Yeah, doing? yeah, you know. Uh, so I really started doing electronics again, like uh, September, October. Because like, I kind of had a point where like my back was up against the wall and I'm like, okay, like regroup, you just lost your biggest distributor. Like, and this was your bread and butter. Like I had an item there that I was paying $3.37 for. And mind you, it was just, it wasn't a grocery item. It was like a, a household item. It's, you know, put a sticker on it and put it in a box and that's it. And I was selling it for $12. So I was making three bucks on each one. So that's almost hundred percent, but I was selling 
200 a day when I had it in stock. Okay. So that item that's make me 200 a day at three bucks, 600 bucks a day, 18 grand a month is gone. I can't get it anymore. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, crap. Like, plus, you know, the, all the other bread and butter stuff that I got from there and in such big bulk and such good pricing. I'm like, all right, I need to figure something out and do it now. So I was like, screw it. We're going to, a buddy of mine I know does electronics and he does okay. I'm like, let's just give it a shot. So, you know, I just started looking up, you know, higher ticket online arbitrage flips. And then from there, all right, well, this is on sale today, but where can I get this from a distributor now? Because it won't be on sale tomorrow, right? So I just started digging around and, well, you know, I, I made a real good connection with the distributor out in California and, you know, an authorized distributor, of, you know, a, a good brand. And we just started pushing and I just started, wow, like this is easier money selling high ticket items and making 50 to a hundred dollars an item and just putting a label in the box and shipping out an EPS. And I, like, I'm like, I can do this like two hours a day, if that, and I can spend an hour a day sourcing, you know, now I still do some regular OA sourcing for like grocery and household stuff. Cause that's like, I just, I just enjoy it. <clears throat> but mainly I used to just do like a leads list, which I'm going to do again because everyone liked them, but um, I just kept grinding and I knew I, there, there, there had to be a, a different way to do this. You know, as entrepreneurs, we're always adapting and stuff, you know, and miles, I tried the shoe thing. Like I really did. Really? Like, oh, nice. I mean, this was, dude, this was, I, like it was like a spurt man like like four years ago oh really I'm like at my parents house and i'm just like i'm going to the outlets in lancaster dude i used to run that place three four and, years ago but what's crazy is i wasn't doing amazon so i was like i'm sure i was walking past gold like crazy but dude i've been just, like i that man every every weekend i drive there because my best friends had transferred from school and then i was just printing yeah. from there yeah it's, it's just story. i tried it man like and I didn't know, like, are you like scan a shoe? Like, sounds like 15. I'm like, oh, it's ranked like 100 or 200. And like, there's 8,000 reviews and I'm going to sell it. And I'm like, but no one buys size 15. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. why is this not selling? It should sell instantly. And I'm like, oh, crap. Now, yeah, check the reviews and see what the reviews are, the sizes and stuff. And, you know, it was just, you know, it's, you know, it's just a lot. Mm-hmm. So, so I did talking- the yeah, talk us through your tech stack, what software tools you use, and all that kind of yeah. stuff. So it used to be like, I used to use, well, I still use AMZ Analyzer. That's for scanning my wholesale price sheets. Um, I use Keepa, of course. Um, I use uh, Ace and Zen and, or what's it called? Uh, the, uh, forget the price, the, the uh, on-screen calculator name of the company. Seller. So, um, no, 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 no. Actually, I can. No, the DSM is a uh, quick view. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Um, what else do I use? Inventory Lab. Yeah. So I use Quick. I use QuickBooks for all my accounting, but Inventory Lab for all my shipments. It's just it's just stupid easy. Yeah. So okay. and it's 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 good inventory software. You can use like end of month, end of year inventory calculations. Just hit print. You know, if it's all in there. Hey, what uh, what repressor do you use? I use uh, BQ. My man, oh, okay. BQ. Is I use I BQ. Use. I pay the hundred bucks a month for the every five minutes, you know, repricing thing. Um, so it's nice. And are, so all your sourcing must be manual then. Yeah, yeah. I, there's nothing, no, uh, no VAs, nothing. no nothing. Yeah, because I can just, tell, like, just based on the way you've been able to pivot, you're good at finding stuff. Yeah, you don't need that. Kind of I have stuff. friends in the space that are like, man, like I got money, I don't have leads, and I'm like, bro, I have leads, I don't have money. Yeah, and then the and you know it's like, I have like I like I can source all my arbitrage all night, all day, every day, and have some you know have home run leads all the time. Like I just got a knack for that, but you know I prefer to sell the high ticket items. So I'm not gonna waste my time selling twenty dollar items. I'd ra- I'd rather sell a two hundred dollar item personally you know, create less work, make more money. You yeah. Know, if somebody else wants to sell a $20 item, then so be it. Mm. All right. So, so are you doing a lot of like storefront stalking or are you on a bunch oh, of yeah. like email lists? Okay. So my man. So it's all storefront. Like it's not even like, I don't know how to explain it. It's just, you know, find a good storefront that all right, I like, I know this guy goes to Walmart. I know this guy goes to target.com, like, you know, and find, you know, just go through their list. Cause once you find one seller, 
that you know, right? Well, they're doing OA flips and they're not buying stuff on clearance. They're buying stuff full retail and flipping them. You know, that's like true OA. Like, yeah. like, just like the replan model. Yeah, that's when you can and, scale. Yeah, when you're, when you're yeah. buying stuff, you can buy over and over again. And you find a store that you're like, oh, wow, this guy's buying like macaroni from Walmart every month and just flipping it. Oh, he's also buying his hot sauce. And then you can go to those listings and get new sellers from every listing he's also on and get all those sellers. And just like make like a big like tree of sellers and just have a big Yeah, I mean, it doesn't take them. long. No, I mean, once you find one, it's like, I mean, you're in there for hours and hours and hours. It just never ends. Yeah, and people yeah, just- Yeah, once you click into our storefront, it takes three to five yeah. seconds to diagnose what kind of a seller they are. Exactly. Right? You just click into a few of those products, match right. it to a website, and then it's, the floodgates yeah. are open, right? It's just how yeah. much you can find. Exactly. I feel that definitely. Um, so like we kind of went over your timeline. I think that, that was pretty interesting. When did you know you could do Amazon full time? Because you said you were in school a few years back. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of it's kind of crazy. I had an internship at a at a garage, you know, changing tires and oil changes and front desk stuff. And I really enjoyed the job. It was a, I was a senior in college, and they said, you know, we want to offer you a full time job. And I said, sure, like I'll take it. And then they go, oh yeah. By the way, we, we want to move you to Mechanicsburg. And I'm oh, like, that's my I'm that's like, my neck of the woods, man. That's where I used to live up there. Oh really? And I'm like, bro, I'm like, I don't want to go to Mechanicsburg. And they're like, well, <laughs> they're like, well, you don't have a choice. And I'm like, I quit. That's far. They're like you from? So, yeah. Like, so like, like, that's like an hour or forty five minutes. Yeah. Like. So I'm like, I'm not gonna move across the river. You know, no one that I know. And I just said, well, I quit before I even start. So like the day I graduated college, I called my, my, my regional manager. I said, Hey, I quit, you know, like, thanks, but no thanks. Like I'm retracting my acceptance. Like I'll just figure life out, you know? And at like, like that day moving forward, I said, I'm not going to look for another job. I was in my parents' house for the next year and just hustled, met my wife. And then we just, boom, now her and I both do it full time together. Nice. Okay. That, that was my next question. Yeah. And you had already been doing the drop shipping stuff. And I assume yeah, yeah. if you're doing drop shipping, you're, you're in the make money online space where you're seeing people do stuff at a high level. So I'm sure oh, yeah. that's sure that like, yeah, I mean, brain it's just crazy. Like there's no excuse for anybody to not be able to make money online. It's just ridiculous. Yeah. You just have to put in like, I I've seen it. It's typically like around a year of like relentlessly trying a bunch of stuff, like a yeah. lot of stuff. That was me mm-hmm. from like, uh pandemic 2020 to like and that's the thing like you guys can scroll back on my instagram your boy was talking about a whole bunch of different stuff and then it just clicked like february last year march of last year Mm -hmm. and then it go you go quickly from like uh a thousand four thousand three thousand a month to like 10 and then you see 10 and 15 and and if you if you're in the right vehicle it can really go up from there like i think i like like my first hundred thousand a month and i'm like holy shit i'm like this is like, this is like a real, like, like I run a seven figure company, you know, out of my, <laughs> it feels I know it's like, you know what I mean, seven, like, like I did, I did 1.2 million last year and I'm like, I run a seven figure company. Like that's two years out I, of school too, or three years out of yeah, school. And I'm like, I'm a one man show pretty much. Like we now have no employees for the last eight months and we did $185,000 in December in sales. Yeah. Man, Just, I'm sure. Like that. MF. Yeah, and annualized profit, you know, that's like 20 yeah. a month or even more for that for those months. Yeah. So it's like crazy. It's like this is a scalable model if you put the work in. Like if you be patient. Because like some days you'll find no leads and some days you'll find a hundred. You know, you just gotta keep but keep your head down and grind. I think that's the thing that a lot of people continuously overestimate is the difference between a forty thousand dollar month and a hundred twenty thousand dollar month isn't as drastic as it seems. It's right. Like nothing, like like the credit card a little more. Like, yeah, like exactly. logistically speaking, you're doing the same stuff. You're sourcing yeah. probably the same amount yeah. of time. You're sourcing yeah. more now, you know. Exactly. Yeah, like it's, yeah, it's it's probably easier to go from like. 10 to like 30 30 to 50 than it is from zero to 10 because that zero to 10 is going to take like three months you know if you're working on it every day and all that but then it's just repeating successful actions day in and day out chopping away buying stuff Mm -hmm. then it it grows from there and the data is not changing the data is constant you're looking at the same data Mm -hmm. time and time again making the same sorts of decisions granted Mm -hmm. uh, it looks different but the essence of it's always you just got to figure out what you feel comfortable with like if you feel okay making a dollar on like a on a grocery item 
you know, and then, you know, and the boss is there with the buy a hundred, label them, take it 10 minutes, put them in a box, ship them out, you know, and then do that 10 times a day. It's a thousand dollars a day. You know, it's really not, it's just how you, how quick you want to scale. Yeah. I'm curious, like, do you see Amazon and like e-com as your long-term thing? Or are you looking to do other businesses? Like you've no, been no, making yeah. money for a while at this point now. Yeah. I mean, so this is, it comes to a point, you know, after we had like the, the recent change in August when we kind of pivoted. Yeah. But now it's like, what do I want to do next? Like, so the past few months I've been doing some uh, stock options trading um some crypto stuff like i have a ethereum mining rig in my dining room now so <laughs> why i'm mining the, why with, in the dining room because it's loud it's you know like, like all like the fans running from the gpus and like the graphics cards and stuff so like and it's it's the coolest place in the house so you know like i'm doing the options trading i'm doing some crypto stuff like i'm mining ethereum and you know like long term no like i don't i don't want to be i know i always will be selling stuff online regardless but I don't want Amazon to always be my full-time income, you know, but I want like, yes, like it's, it's cool. But like, as you guys know, um, as, as you guys know, like anything can happen with yep. Amazon, like they, they can shut you down tomorrow because they don't like the way you look, you know, and you'd be like, well, okay. Like, sorry, you know? So it's just like, it's just crazy. So yeah. yeah, I mean, that's something Miles talks about a bunch in, in terms of diversity, you know, keeping diversified and not yeah. having too many eggs in the Amazon basket, right. right? That's why he pushes content all the time, right? Is because, you know, you rely on Amazon too much. It's the wild west, right? We exactly. essentially have no idea what could potentially happen, right? And, mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, the buck's in their hand, right? They can do whatever yeah, they exactly. want. Exactly. You're playing in their sandbox, you know. Is uh, our electronics tax free in Pennsylvania? uh definitely not oh oh so you're so you're paying sales tax on some items or are you oh uh, no like i'm mainly exempt oh because it's walmart and like best buy and shit walmart, like that. best buy yeah. costco nice. you know like obviously like not target but like the five percent red card <laughs> helps but i actually don't use my red card to buy from target believe it or not i'm surprised you can still even buy from target yeah like i will i don't use my red card that's the thing like i have a buddy who uses his red card and they shut his account down that, bro, I they did the same like, thing. Our our host Danny literally got it, made one purchase, and they just they well, cut it off. I use my regular credit card, and like the one clearance item a few years ago, I bought like three hundred of, and they shipped them all, like no wow. questions asked, you know. But I wasn't using my credit card to get like that five percent, you know. So I guess maybe they didn't like alarm or like stuff any like red flags or anything. So yeah, I think we're both banned from Target. <laughs> yeah i mean I, like I, super yeah. like couldn't be more banned from target <laughs> even with like a it was with like a vpn or like a you know man i tried everything different credit cards different addresses Jeez. different billing addresses shipping everything man. they're good they're like names. Almost, pretty much everywhere else you can get around like yeah, yeah. yeah. vpns i've tried yeah yep yeah. interesting Crazy. something yeah. i'm curious about is as you talked about your your private label endeavor, did you drop oh, yeah. everything that was previously working to try private label? Um, no, I was more like a saga. It was more like, all right, well, I either do, you know, wholesale or do private label, but I'm gonna try private label while I'm trying wholesale and just see what works yeah. best, you know. And I bought, you know, I did the whole thing, you know, I I bought the course, uh, you know, the mentors, all that stuff. Man, <laughs> it just wasn't for me. Funny story though, now that we bring up private label, I'm actually co owner of a private label brand right now that's really? actually killing it. All right. Um, but my first attempt did not go well by myself. Uh, this is a grocery private label um, that I'm co owner of, but it's a very niche, it's a very niche grocery. Um, you know, we, we hold a rank around 15,000 in grocery consistently. What, oh, what wow. type of revenue is it doing? We're, we sell, you know, 400, 500 years a month. Okay. But it's very, it's not a lot, but it's, it's a very small passive, mm -hmm. you know, and we just reinvest all the profits. Cause so I, I don't know. Might, while aggregators are paying these multiples, man, it might, might well, be. Do you about. know, like the reselling teacher? Yeah, yeah, man, we had it. We had him on a few months ago. He was fantastic. That's that's, that's who I co-own the brand with. Cool. Okay, that's what that's so, all. Awesome. Yeah. So we we yeah, I, awesome. I discovered a product. Actually, it was funny. I discovered a product doing 
um, brand outreach, you know, finding niche brands to reach out to see if they would sell them their products wholesale for Amazon. And the guy on the owner of the company responded with me and said, why would I sell to you? And like, just a real jerk. And I'm like, you know what? All right. So I zoomed in on his pack. I zoomed in on his packaging and then literally it said manufactured by so-and-so in this and it had like the whole manufacturer's <laughs> That's name funny. and address. So I'm like, I went to Eric and I said, yo, let's, let's do this. You know, Eric's very like technical mm-hmm. and I'm very like ambitious. Like you I have the idea. You seem technical too though, man. You seem yeah, really like, like sharp and technical. <laughs> yeah, but like, but like I'm like ambitious and Eric's like, yeah, I can do that. And I'm like, I don't know how you know, to, like, I mean, he does all, of, like, he did all of our A-plus content, like, mm-hmm. like, all that stuff, right? And, like, I don't know how to do that stuff, like, if I'm, if I'm being honest. So, he yeah. did the majority of, like, the listing setup and all that kind of stuff. And I was like, hey, here's the great idea. This, this guy is selling a butler leads a month. There's literally no competition. It's super unique. And now we just did it, and we, we're on our fourth order now. And the orders we did, like the first order, like was a thousand bags, then two thousand. Our last order was four thousand bags. So it's like you know, we just keep, we just keep doing. We just launched a um, a video ad on Amazon. That's why like, I was gonna ask if you're, so you are media buying then. Yeah. So like we we go most most stuff we do we we get through Fiverr, and we mm-hmm. just have you know them guys on there and make us you know like they made our video ad and stuff. So. Yeah, that 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 pulls in. We have a one pack and a two pack, um, and we're just it's just auto mode. Like we don't run barely any PPC because it's so unique mm-hmm. that like there's no competition except for like the main seller. How long have you guys? It's had? funny thinking back to Eric's episode. He definitely talked about this. He definitely brought like he didn't mention you by name, but I, I'm quite yeah. certain he brought about, he brought this up, which is funny. Can you talk about the one that failed? Oh, no, I just asked. The oh company. yeah. What what? We, oh, how long have you guys had it? Oh geez, what's uh probably a little over a year now. Bro, you got you gotta sell that, man. What through all these I'm getting hit by ads of people trying to buy Amazon brands. Dude. I know I get oh, like, I'm getting like, like, like like they hit my like they find my address to my Amazon storefront and they send me stuff like do you want to sell your account? And I'm like, I don't even do PL my account, bro. 10x annual profits. Tell them 10x annual profits. 10x annual profits. That means I think like three. Three to five is is like industry standard from what oh, I yeah. so the, I'm like, to think it's that. like yeah. they're paying crazy stuff, right? Like what if yeah. the economy tanks, dude? Yeah. Like I know. The, they're not paying three to five X if it's yeah, I, but people it's, still gotta I mean, but my, my brand will be fine because people still gotta eat, right? Well, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I mean you, you, know. you brought up you brought up how unpredictable and unreliable Amazon is. Oh so yeah. I hedge against yeah. that would be the yeah. cash out. And we've had a couple so, guests on there. <laughs> <laughs> we definitely want to like 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 we we wanted to go more wide like you know different flavors and stuff of the of the item and everything oh but, that's cool that's that's but really it's cool. like the like our our one item doing so well it's like have just, you uh so it's through your amazon account though you guys it's, it's actually account. it's it's through eric's actually oh okay cool cool so wow. it's through eric huh? yeah have you, have you guys ever met in person because i know he i think he lives nope. in Illinois or something yeah no he lives in michigan but now we haven't yeah yeah, great guy though. And so you guys oh, yeah. like, just met like two, three. Yeah, years. we actually like talk on the phone like three times a week usually. Sometimes. Oh, like, I'm he's sure. Just, like, met. He's a great he, guy. So I'm I sure mean, yeah. like, much for if I'm just like stressed out, I'm like, yo, I, I gotta call you. I'm just stressed. I, just, I like, I just gotta talk to you, dude. Yeah, you know, he's <laughs> a super cool guy. You know. What's up? And so. have you guys ever considered making it its own account? Like, uh, no, because you know how you know how Amazon is. That's what I, yeah, yeah like right. all that stuff. All of a sudden, I'm logging into our account with the same IP address as my account, and now we're all suspended. Yeah. Um, I don't like, I'm like, and like the fact that we even need to worry about that, yeah, I mean, really grinds my gears. Oh, yeah, <laughs> like, like, and that's to say lightly, you know, like honest sellers like us are getting shut down, period, you know, not a lot, but it's happening every day. Oh, it happens. Yeah. for i mean for what for being related to accounts because i went to the library and so did joe and we both have an amazon account we both use the library's wi-fi like really yeah that well the ip or however that works yeah that's yeah it's just crazy oh man seriously so you guys are taking in like wholesale orders still just to your house or because you left you done of the warehouse yeah mm-hmm. yeah so what, so like you know before when i was using my big distributor it'd be like truckloads of stuff right now i'm working with like just smaller brands mm-hmm. so 
you know, a hundred units might be in just one box, you know, you know, these small brands, I don't work with like the large grocery places anymore. I don't buy like, here's 10 boxes of oatmeal, a hundred cases of syrup, you know, like I used to. Now it's like, all right, well, here's an example, like a uh, honey brand, a very niche honey brand wants to sell, you know, they're on Amazon and I ask them to sell me the products on Amazon. They say, oh yeah, you know, MQ of 10 cases. All right, we'll sell me 10 cases, you know. What you- selling up, huh? Oh, my bad. Would you go back if the, if dude hit you back, we're selling again to online sellers, would you, would you take him back? Uh, no, no. Really? No. Okay, yeah. cool. Really? So you're in a good place. That totally means Yeah, no. I mean, so the stress, like, I mean, you look guys like Amazon Lit and like those guys, I mean, they have what, 30, 40 employees and they're just guys like you know, 80. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm just like, I don't want that. Like, I don't like, I thought I wanted that, but like, I like my freedom better right? Like they're in there and like mad respect. They're in there like 12 hours a day, 13 hours a day, 14 hours a day sometimes. You yeah. Know, and are, are getting uh, compensated, uh, you know, rightfully so for those, those hours. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. I mean, but for me, it's like, you know, how can I simplify the game? Because just like eBay, like my buddy quit his job 10 years ago um, by selling on eBay at, at the time. And then eBay went away, you know, not, it didn't go away but now it's really hard to make a living on eBay. Like it's really hard. Yeah. And now it's like, all right, when I was going to Amazon, well, I'm not saying it's going to happen, but like, what happens if, you know, big brands start saying, we don't want any e-commerce sellers, you know, we want to make a deal with Amazon and, you know, we want to sell everything ourselves, you know? So what happens then? I mean, just look at, for example, I was selling a lot of Bob's Red Mill, a lot. I mean, yep. you know what that is? I mean, tons of it. And now they have their own Amazon account. Yeah. You know? So it's like, I was selling an item. It was, it was, uh, it was barley, a bag of barley. Pushing yeah. thousands of units these a month. The company said, we're going to do it ourselves now. Like, it's just insane. Like companies will catch on one day, but they can do it themselves. And it's not that hard. They can have the factory put a sticker on the bag and ship to Amazon. It just, you know, at some point, you know, everything's always changing. Like, for example, we just got news that PlayStation and during Q4 was now restricted. Like, you can't, like, no one can sell PlayStation. Like, it's hard to sell PlayStation now. So it's yeah. like, you know, companies will start catching on that they can do it themselves, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's interesting, though, because, like, with the smaller brands, you obviously run the risk of them easily getting on it. I kind of think of a lot of the larger ones as more protected, but clear, I mean, clearly that, you know, the risk is right really there, but like in like a Adidas, for example, you can count on not being IP complaining because they don't sell themselves, which is clutch. But at right. the same time, then uh, Amazon pretty much sells everything Adidas themselves. So it, mm-hmm. there's not a lot. Well, of like, do I think Quaker Oats will make an Amazon account? Probably not. Right. Like they, like they thought of every single grocery store in the country. Why do they need an Amazon account? Yeah. You know, so. And to pay I Amazon think, all those yeah. fees and stuff. Or yeah. what, and or what I think you're right. You know, like the big uh-huh. brands, I think, you know, like, like your craft, your Quaker roads, you know, the, the items on the, on the store shelves are pretty safe. Right. But I'm talking more like stuff like that I'm selling. So once let's say Dyson, what, what, you know, why doesn't Dyson just sell their own vacuums on Amazon? right like it will they i don't know but they might and that's something that we have to work, we, have, we have to watch out for amazon's becoming a very private label driven wholesale driven marketplace yeah and as you know as companies start you know find more ip complaints all that stuff they don't want their stuff on on amazon by non-authorized distributors you know we have to adapt somehow yeah and that's why yeah important to be building skills and network and leverage which is all that stuff but that's why i i tell you guys man make content all that like and just the network too because you you reach a certain point i think where like you know your your network say for example amazon got shut down right i pretty quickly i could get up a decent sized ebay operation you know what i mean and i be Mm -hmm. posting content about it the whole way there's great things that come from that and everything but i think you bring up some very very important points every everyone should definitely take note of right have you dealt personally with account health issues uh yeah i mean knock on wood uh not suspended but oh don't say it don't say it don't say it don't please don't say it (laughs) um don't jinx it 
but uh like two months ago oh, uh i had like back to back like inauthentic and ip like same week and i'm like yeah. what the crap oh yeah now you sell enough items where that doesn't matter i've had yeah. i i had i had like four hit the same week and had seven on my account at one time your boy was bam one after the other knocked him out but like there was a there was a certain point where they yeah screwed up well then like you know i contacted like the rights owner and i'm like yo like what's up with this you know and i'll tell you the brand it was right now it was epson i was selling an epson printer like and i'm like there's other sellers like i got i actually found like the manager of brand protection on linkedin and i'm like i'm gonna email her right and i'm like yo whatever her name was what's going on here i did nothing wrong she's like oh like what's what's a complaint id and blah blah, blah. and she's like yeah like this printer wasn't meant for e-commerce sales but you can sell any other printer you want i'm like but i can't sell this one no but why well it's that's our target model printer that's just for target because I was sourcing these from Target. I was driving all around PA. Really? Loading my car up with these printers from, from Target just doing wow. store pickups. Nice. Oh, store pickups. I can't and even. And I'm just like. What a strategy that is. And I'm like, I was selling them like crazy. And then I got hit with the IP complaint. And everyone's going off the list. And I'm like, crap. And she's like, yeah, this, this printer was just for Target, not for anywhere else. And I'm like. They, they take it off? Do they at least? No. So, you? like, they, like, ignored me. And then I'm like, just following up. Like, I, I, I was like, I'm just following up on this. You know, what can you do? And then I get another violation on Amazon. It says, you are being warned to stop contacting these people inappropriately. They, so then they reported me for, for emailing them about the complaint. And I'm like, I'm done. Like, like I, 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 so I just, at that point, I just let it go and moved on with my life. Yeah, because if you aren't selling any more of those, it's just the pain of it's, having. Yeah, it's happening. more of a, I wanted it off my dashboard, you know. Smart man. But Piece it's still mind. there. So, and we let you know it's 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 still there. Gotcha. Yes. Yeah, so, another five months. Yeah. yeah true. Yeah. Finishing up. Any any final questions here, uh, Garrett for Curtis? I have to ask. Can you tell us the product that failed on PL? I'll, I'll oh wait yeah, yeah. Later. Oh yeah. Um. So it was a baby milestone blanket. And this was like and where, where did the idea come from that's interesting we just i just did yeah, like the and, steps like you know the course said and you know, look through you know the categories and i knew like baby's a category that's a really good category it's it's a hard people spend market. a bag people spend a bag on their baby i know everyone loves their kid just like pets man people love like, <laughs> i have three dogs i love all three of my dogs and we spend money on the we buy bandanas and chain like and name tags and toys and treats like they're, like it's crazy we spend a ton of money on stuff for our dogs like just like kids so you know that's a category that people spend a lot of money on there and the, and like the dollar signs don't matter they're like my kid needs it i'm gonna buy it so it was like a you put the baby on the blanket and like you put like like you put like a like a marker over how old it is you know so it's like oh, i'm four months old today and like a circle around like number four and it's, it's just nuts. Like, I mean, I got professional photography with like an actual baby. I mean, like I went in, I mean, it was, it was nuts. And then I went through viral launch to launch it, mm -hmm. um, gave away like 400 units and we were ranked like 2000 in baby. And then I'm like, and then I started PPC, but like, that's what kills you. Like PPC will eat you alive. Like, sure. I was holding that rank. I was selling 40, 50 a day, but I wasn't making any money because the PPC costs were so darn high. So that's, that's, that's my lesson. I'll probably, and then I was like, well, maybe this is, maybe this isn't for me. And then, you know, Eric and I started chatting and it was a very low cost product. And I'm like, let's give it a try. And it worked. So. Hey, beautiful, man. All right, cool. So where can people find you on social media if they want to ask you any questions or anything sure. along those lines i'm at primetime fba on instagram clean at and, yeah when uh, did you start the page oh uh, probably two years ago oh cool because i know a primetime fba on twitter i'm pretty sure too uh, <laughs> that's an awesome guy that hopefully we'll have on podcast on here uh, i'm on like twitter. not even i'm not even on twitter so like <laughs> yeah it's, it's good name though definitely cool man yeah thanks a lot for coming on yeah, uh no problem yeah thanks to all our listeners as well make sure you guys 
like subscribe do what you got to do down below and we'll see you guys uh friday morning 8 30 a.m eastern sharp for another episode thanks a lot guys